This video is about change in tandem. That means how quantities change together. Among other things, we will consider the graphical relationship between an original function f of x, its rate of change, and the rate of change of the rate of change. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.1. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. A function is a mathematical relation that maps a set of input values to a set of output values such that each input value is mapped to exactly one output value. Note that in previous courses you may have used the vertical line test to determine if a graph is a function or not, but later in this course we will learn that this test does not always work. The set of input values of a function is called the domain and is represented by the independent variable, usually x or t. The set of output values of a function is called the range, and it's represented by the dependent variable, usually y. Example 1. Sketch a graph for the closed interval from negative 4 to 4 for the function rules below. Part A. The function f halves each input value and then adds 1. If we let x represent the input value and y represent the output value, then a function that halves the input value would have a one-half x in it, and then adds one, so I'll put a plus one on the end. You will recognize this as a linear function with a y-intercept at one and a slope of one-half. So if we sort of go up one, and then over 2, we will have the line. Uh, let's go up 1 and over 2 again. That will take us to the end of the interval. And similarly, if we go to the left, down 1, left 2, down 1, left 2, we have this. However, we want to represent all of the values from negative 4 to positive 4. So let's fill in a solid line. Part B, the rule is given to us as a table, so we simply plot the input-output pairs on the graph, and that's it. Now let's talk about the graphical behavior of functions. If a function is increasing, on a graph it will be rising from left to right. If it is decreasing, on a graph it will be falling from left to right. If a function is concave up, then it will form sort of a U shape or a bowl shape. If it's concave down, it will form sort of an umbrella shape. For a function to be concave up on a given interval, it doesn't need to make a whole U. Any part of a U shape is concave up. Similarly, any part of an umbrella shape is considered concave down. Given the graph of a function, its rate of change is indicated by the slope of a tangent line. For example, at x equals 0, the rate of change is equal to 0 because the slope of the tangent line is 0. At x equals 2, the rate of change is about 1 because the slope of the tangent line is approximately 1. At x equals 4, I estimate the rate of change to be about 2 because the slope seems to be about 2 at x equals 4. Notice that the rate of change is increasing as we move from left to right. The rate of change goes from 0 to 1 to 2 and keeps on increasing. This will always happen when a function is concave up. This is a relationship that's going to come up over and over again throughout the rest of the course and into calculus. So go ahead and memorize right now that when a function is concave up, the rate of change is increasing. This pattern continues even if we include the negative rates of change on the left. At x equals negative 2, we estimate the slope and thus the rate of change to be about negative 1. At x equals negative 4, we estimate the rate of change to be about negative 2. As we look from left to right, the rate of change goes from negative 2 to negative 1 to 0 to 1 to 2. All of these values are increasing from left to right. 
negative two is the smallest number on this list. Negative one is bigger than negative two. Zero is bigger than negative one. And of course, one is bigger and two is the biggest. Similarly, I want you to memorize that when a function is concave down, its rate of change is decreasing. For example, look at this concave down function and notice that the slope and thus the rate of change goes from two to one to zero to negative one to negative two, always decreasing from left to right. Here's a chart showing the graphical relationships between an original function f, its rate of change, and the rate of change of the rate of change. This information comes up over and over again throughout AP Precalculus and even more often in AP Calculus. So pause the screen and write this down. I want you to be able to write this from memory on a piece of scratch paper the next time you take a test or a quiz. So far we've talked about this part of the chart where we saw that when a function is concave up, the rate of change is increasing. And if a function is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. If a function is neither concave up nor concave down on a given interval, then it is linear. So it makes sense that the rate of change will be neither increasing nor decreasing, but rather be constant. This makes sense because a line has a constant slope and therefore a constant rate of change. Function f is linear, function g is concave down, and function h is concave up. However, all three functions are increasing from left to right. So according to this chart, uh, when a function is increasing, the rate of change will always be positive. Increasing functions will always have a positive rate of change because the slope of the tangent line is always positive. Similarly, if a function is decreasing, the rate of change will be negative because the slopes of the tangent lines will always be negative on a decreasing function. What if a function is neither increasing nor decreasing? It would look like this, a horizontal line. This function is constant and the rate of change will be zero because the slope is zero. Example two, the graph of h of x is shown above. Use the graph of h to find the open intervals where h has the following behaviors. Part A, where is h increasing? If h is increasing, it'll be rising from left to right. So that's what's happening on this interval right here. And then on this interval right here. When they ask us for intervals like these, they are talking about input values. So we say that h is increasing on the open interval from negative two to zero, union four to seven. Notice my use of open circles. That's what they mean by open intervals. Never include the endpoints. And we use parentheses in interval notation to show that the endpoints are not included. Part B. Where is h decreasing? Well, it's going to be decreasing from here to here. It's going downhill. And then it's also decreasing from here. All right, and it just keeps on decreasing some more until we get to here. Looking at the corresponding input values, h is decreasing on the interval from negative four to negative two, union, zero to four. Part C, where is H concave up? So we're looking for that bowl shape. So it seems to be concave up starting here and continuing to the end. So H is concave up on the open interval from two to seven. Part D, where is H both increasing and concave down? Well, h is increasing from here to here and also increasing from here to here. But what about concave down? Which part of the orange part of the graph is also concave down? Well, that's going to be just this part. 
So this is the interval where h is both concave down and increasing. And that's the open interval from negative 2 to 0. Part E. Where is h both decreasing and concave up? h is decreasing from here to here and also from here to here. But which part of the orange part is also concave up? That's just this part right here. So h is both decreasing and concave up on the open interval from 2 to 4. Example 3. The graph of k is increasing on the intervals negative 4 to 1 and 5 to 7, and k is decreasing on the interval from 1 to 5. Additionally, the graph of k is concave up on the interval from 3 to 6 and concave down on the intervals negative 4 to 3 and 6 to 7. Sketch a possible graph of k of x below. I'm going to use guidelines to help me draw this graph. They mention the interval from negative 4 to 1, so I put vertical lines at negative 4 and 1. Here's your interval from 5 to 7. The interval from 1 to 5 is already covered by the vertical lines here and here. And they mention the interval from 3 to 6, so I put a vertical line here and here. Across the top, I'm going to indicate whether k is increasing or decreasing on the interval. So k is increasing on the interval from negative 4 to 1. So I'm going to just put i and c for increasing right here. Uh, also increasing from 5 to 7. So I'm going to put a little increasing here and here. k is decreasing on the interval from 1 to 5. So that's from here to here, so that's going to be decreasing and decreasing. Additionally, across the bottom, I'm going to indicate whether k is concave up or concave down on the interval. We are told that k is concave up on the interval from 3 to 6. So that means k will be concave up on this interval. That's how I show concave up, by the way and also on this interval, concave up. Uh, concave down on the interval from negative 4 to 3. So that's from here to here. So that means we are concave down on this interval and this interval. Finally, k is concave down on the interval from 6 to 7. So I'm going to put another concave down right here. Now we are ready to sketch a possible graph of k. It needs to be increasing and concave down on this first interval. So here we go. Let's just draw something that is increasing and concave down like this. In the next interval, we need something that is decreasing and still concave down. So decreasing and concave down would be like this. In the next interval, we need still decreasing, but now concave up. So here we go, decreasing, but now concave up. On the next interval, we need increasing and still concave up. So that's going to continue on like this. In the final interval, we need k to be increasing, but now concave down. So increasing and concave down like this. There are many possible solutions for our graph of k of x, which we should label. Uh, there's nothing to tell us exactly where to begin or exactly how high or how low to get. So your graph could be higher or lower at different points, but it should have this same basic shape to it. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.